Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today, I wanted to go through our updated controller settings here for Warzone because over the past season or so, a couple of new settings have been added in and also some things in general have changed. And you might want to update your controller settings in some ways to just better enhance your gameplay experience. So we are diving right in. Obviously, we got three different actual areas of controller settings, your base general controller settings, your aiming settings, and your gameplay settings. So we'll go through in depth on all of these and basically explain what you want to look out for. So uh, obviously, you might want to have controller as your aiming input device to start things off. That's usually a good step one. Now, for button layout, this is super cool this year just because while they do have all their nice presets, and for me, tactical has always been my go-to. I do play on a scuff controller, so I've got the paddles on the back, meaning that I can slide cancel with my right thumbstick, and then I can just use a button on the back for my melee and whatnot. So that works fine for me. But also, you can just go through and uh, manually change the uh, keybinds for all of these if you wanted to. So if you just wanted to change your tack, stance, slide, and dive uh, button to something else, you could do so. If you, for whatever reason, wanted to change your lethal equipment to something else other than your right bumper, you could do so. So for the best true keybinds for controller, I'd recommend just going through and customizing these exactly how you want those. For bumper ping, not a fan of this, so I do keep this off, and I don't find a need to flip my R1 and uh, R2 and L1 and L2 just because I've got digital triggers on my controller, so I can press them all super fast. That said, that can be really convenient for players if you do like to have that sort of faster click in of the bumpers as opposed to the triggers that's a viable choice for sure i leave my stick layout uh, as just the default there i don't change anything there vibration 100 percent turn this off while it is cool for immersion and it's nice to see like you're like in the game feeling with uh with the controller vibrating if things are exploding or whatnot it's just not good from a competitive standpoint you don't want your controller shaking and bouncing around even just minutely if you're in like a super precise long range gunfight that could throw your aim off some so definitely turn that off Trigger effects, if you have like a PlayStation 5 controller that's got the haptics and whatnot, I don't like having this on either. I want to easily be able to click in my triggers uh, without having to worry about like pressing down harder on them or anything because of like the haptic experience. So I definitely leave that off as well. And then when it comes to dead zone inputs, this is something that we've talked about a lot this year because they did update this with this really cool feature that allows you to test your dead zone. So when you turn this test on, all the numbers here on the graph should read zero. What you want to do is move your uh, thumbsticks around a little bit and then let them rest and they should always reset back to zero there. And you can test and see what your dead zone is by simply turning your left stick minimum and your right stick minimum to zero here and when you do that on both of those and then you do the test and then you move your thumbsticks around you'll see that there are going to be uh you know some inputs being detected there two percent on my left stick two percent on my right stick so i just go through and i bump those up but the, here's what's important we've talked about that exact same strategy in the past right however it's also important to note that over time stick drift becomes more and more common the more you uh use your controller it's just wear and tear and unfortunately like playstation 5 controllers are super prone to this it seems like uh but you use it more and more you might get more stick drift so while you've been maybe sitting on like three and three for your right stick and your left stick minimum because of your set stick drift if you play like that for maybe three months of constant use, you might want to go through and check that again and see if things have updated because you might need to increase your dead zone there. So really do be mindful of that. And then another really important thing here is your trigger dead zones. Turn these to zero. Whether you have digital triggers or like the standard trigger that you got to pull all the way down, zero means that the second it hits the actuation point to fire your gun, it's going to start firing. You don't actually have to pull all the way down. So that just makes it easier to spam guns or start getting shots off there without that slight delay and having to go all the way down instead. Dead. Uh, we then get into some of our aiming settings here, and there's some important things I want to take note of here that I've sort of updated over time. Initially, I am still playing on a slightly staggered sensitivity. Eight and seven is what I'm currently on. Sometimes if I'm feeling extra spicy, I'll go for like a nine, eight, but I do like having this as uh, staggered just because it takes a lot more to move left to right in this game when you're trying to, uh, you know, play aggressively across the long range and the close range so having that a little bit higher i feel like is nice because vertical you're not doing as much there there's just not that many fights in this game outside of looking in the sky or maybe if you're in downtown that you're going to be doing a ton of vertical movement plus for recoil control purposes it's easy to control vertical recoil so you don't need a super high sensitivity there to like snap a gun back down into place now i do not change anything with the advanced sensitivity here just because there have been several tests done that there's not really a huge distinction in that versus just leaving it natural there. If you do end up going through and changing that, you'll notice differences in the first place that you might have to take time to get used to just because it's gonna throw you off with your aiming uh, initially there. 
Now, sensitivity multiplier, I do leave all of these as just one. I don't really mess with these, but if you wanted something to feel different in third person or in vehicles, you absolutely could do that. That's just more so a, uh, a preference thing there. Vertical aim access, I leave all that as standard. Tax stance multiplier, I just leave as one here. So when I do switch into tax stance, it's going to be my standard sensitivity. I don't have to worry about adjusting to that at all. Aim response curve type dynamic is still the go to uh, pretty much across the board. This is what pretty much all the pros use currently as well. It just is like a snappy feeling to your right thumbstick and what's going to feel the most realistic to what you're doing on your thumbstick versus in game there. ADS multiplier focus, I keep on one. I do keep that ADS sensitivity on instant. And then this is where things get very important as well. The gradual uptick of your uh, advanced custom sensitivities per your zoom so low zoom would be like a default iron sight or like a simple slate reflector or something like that then of course we have our two times scopes our three times scopes our four to five times zoom so on and so forth all the way up to high zoom which would be like some of those base sniper scopes as well and what i do here is actually a couple of things these in game obviously but a few things out of game as well to really just perfect my general aim so as far as my ads sensitivity multiplier goes when i have these lower zoom optics i'm usually using those for close to mid-range gameplay and i like to be just laser accurate with those so i do end up knocking down my sensitivity some so that it's not too fast in those close range fights where i'm overshooting my enemies when i'm trying to ads and snap onto them right so i feel much more accurate dropping this down to about 0.8 now if you do have a keyboard and mouse lying around you could always plug those into your console if you play on console or on uh, obviously pc if you're playing on controller there and you can type in the exact values here so like 0.83 you wouldn't be able to get unless you hover over it with your mouse and then go Go through and type that it just be in increments of five which is what i have everywhere else basically but then i just gradually increase this over time all the way back up to one for my sniper scopes in super long range fights like that in high zooms you don't want to have a lower sensitivity multiplier because then it's going to be too slow to actually keep up with enemies so this is like by far the biggest thing i do in game to help my aim out now that said out of game i also use control freaks and these are wildly important for better aim as well for a handful of reasons obviously i've got my base default thumbsticks on my scuff controller here but with the control freaks i raise the height of these and i add better grip to them as well so for instance on my right stick here i'm using the uh, destiny 2 lightfall stick on my left stick here i'm using a vortex control freak and so i'm getting better grip on these i'm also extending my range of motion on these which is super clutch as well and this helps a ton with not only uh you know grip and feel on your controller but also precise movements as well so when i'm moving up or down or left or right whatever the case is it's a lot more convenient across the board i am partnered with control freak but i've used these for years and years and years i've been partnered with them for a long time because they are actually super valuable for controller gameplay so if you ever want to get a pair for yourself throw in code immortal at checkout and i'll leave a link to that down in the description below but yeah that's definitely some of the most important things you can focus on for just perfecting aim across the board here target aim assist of course if you want this on you're gonna need that on everyone's trying to abuse aim assist and i uh, have that on controller playing without it i I mean i respect it but it's just obviously not the smartest thing to do considering how good aim assist is in cod right now still going for the black ops aim assist type there's been a lot of talk about this versus default and most people still trend towards black ops in terms of like the best rotational aim assist and the easiest way to cheese that so i'd still recommend that there assist on the third person correction type and then as far as motion sensor aiming like the gyro aiming that is a very very niche uh like area for controller gameplay and if that's something you're interested in you'd probably want to do a lot more research into that whereas from a competitive standpoint 99 percent of players are not using something like that lastly here we've got our gameplay settings for controller as well and as we get into these quick reminder if you are new to the channel or you simply have not subscribed yet this is your one-stop shop for all things going on in cod so feel free to hit that subscribe button to always stay up to date and if you enjoy this video or if you find it helpful do me a favor drop a like on it it is always really appreciated but initially here now for all of our gameplay settings these are also wildly important there's some new settings that have been added here over time so automatic tax sprint i'm still going for it saves your left thumbstick basically i don't have to constantly click in and spam my left thumbstick to get that full-on tax sprint and the second you have tax sprint available you'll always be doing that as well so double w there that's four v's uh slide maintain sprint this is something they actually updated post launch we've talked about it a couple of times but i like having this on because it really makes it feel like i'm never getting any dead slides whatsoever when i'm trying to slide cancel previously with this off i just felt like it was not really uh helping much in that area it felt awkward and kind of clunky so that's something i would recommend turning on 
don't have auto move forward i want to do that manually now if you don't play with automatic tack sprints i would recommend having single tap sprint on there so you only have to press your thumbstick in once to start that sprint uh feature or that tack sprint feature so it again saves your thumbstick and that's really really important for longevity and controller life right for grounded mantle airborne automatic mantle and automatic mantle and hang this is the trio of things that i have set up so that i don't ever have awkward mantling situations now for me personally i wish i could just turn off ledge hang entirely I hate that feature it's super annoying to run into but having this is off partial and off means that you're not going to randomly mantle things like if you're not looking at them or when you're not trying to jump and mantle them it just won't happen that frequently so that's like a trio of settings you want to pair up together another new update here that we saw recently was an update to slide and dive behavior adding in this hybrid setting that makes it so that you have that instantaneous slide of slide only there's no input delay whatsoever on your slide cancel but then if you want to dive you can just press in on your left thumbstick and then press in once on your right thumbstick and you'll end up doing a dive motion slide only does still have that glitch slash kind of feature maybe where if you press both thumbsticks in at the same time you'll also be able to dive so between slide only and a hybrid those are your best two options for fast and snappy slide uh slide inputs and you don't have to worry about any dead slides or any delay there like you would if you use tap to slide for instance so i'd recommend either slide only or hybrid whatever you end up not accidentally diving the most with is the better choice there for sure Plunging underwater, I still keep as trigger. Parachute automatic behavior, you want this on off so that you never end up uh, automatically pulling it too high. Sometimes for uh, automatic pull, you'll end up actually pulling too high, then other players will beat you to the ground. And then you're gonna get fried, right? So you wanna have that on off. Sprinting door bash on on, so you can quickly get through doors, of course. And then ledge hang climb behavior, I have as uh, mantle only for that. ADS behavior, pretty standard here. I have that on a hold. Uh, for my zoom changing, I just keep that on my sprint button, so that's nice and easy. I can change that whenever I please. Uh, equipment behavior, hold, weapon mount activation. I keep on ADS and melee, so I don't ever actually accidentally do that in like a gunfight. It's nice and quick to get into that. Short exit delay, although I'm pretty sure that's mostly placebo there. Tax dance animation, this is another important one. I had this on ADS and then down on the D-pad just so that I never accidentally activate this in a gunfight. Some of these other ones like ADS and sprint or even double tap ADS, you might accidentally do in a gunfight and then you're in tax stance and you might not want to be there in that situation. So they just make sure that I'm never accidentally going into tax stance. I do keep that on on toggle. So when I do manually go into tax stance, I will always be in tax stance unless I uh, toggle it off again. So it's just not constant recycling on death where I always have to go back into it it just defaults to that prioritize interact is still the go-to for war zone looting you're not going to have to hold to open up chests or anything you can quickly get guns and quickly go through uh you know doors and whatnot to uh you keep moving and keep your movement fluid there armor plate behavior still sticking on apply all because you want to be able to put on as many armor plates with one press of a button as possible of course just speeds things up off on the ADS stick swap backpack control is going to be directional buttons there depleted weapon ammo switch I've gone back and forth on this and I really just settle on off here because having my weapons automatically switch for me when I'm not ready for them to throws me off sometimes so I like to manually be able to do that c4 detonation you want on one by one so if you have two c4 you throw the first one you can blow that up right away before throwing the second one uh the second one's not always needed right so that's definitely clutch there manual fire behavior I have on press there just because it does feel a little wonky sometimes on some semi-auto guns and then akimbo behavior this is a new one as well where if you are using an akimbo weapon or an akimbo loadout you can actually do independent where your left trigger fires the left gun and your right trigger fires the right gun or paired where just your right trigger ends up firing both guns right so if you want it to be uh nice and easy with just one input there you could do paired that's just more so a preference thing but it is a new setting you probably want to update there then vehicle behavior here not too crazy short delay on the recenter free look obviously then melee to activate the lean out there then overlay behaviors don't really matter whatsoever but these are my newly updated settings here for warzone right now definitely some things that i've adjusted over time or some things you might want to check up on in the case of like dead zones and whatnot but that being said that's gonna wrap things up if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on it and if you're new here you want to guarantee you're always up to date be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out